them there. Really spiky cactus in the desert and such. And uh, up here, it's rain. So, you know, apparently I just bring rain to the desert wherever I go. On this trip, I'll be traveling over 2,250 miles from Colorado to the Pacific Ocean and back, stopping at four national parks, one national monument, several rock shops, and even more vintage stores along the way. These are my field notes from my Western road trip of 2021. On day four, we pick up in Moab, Utah, and we'll be journeying another 300 miles west into Arizona. But before that, donuts. I indulged in the vanilla old-fashioned and the cinnamon sugar here at Doe Bird in Moab, but everything looked delicious. Hello there. This is my outfit for today. I have some black high-waist twill trousers. These are still drafted after my 1940s pattern that I was using here on the channel last year. I just narrowed the legs. So um, I'll have to see if you guys want to see all the modifications I've made to those trousers because it's not very hard or different, so it wouldn't be a very epic video, but let me know. Um, and then I have my tooled leather Disney belt on again, and then the black button down. I actually made this shirt recently over on my Patreon. Um, so that's where this comes from. It's got some top stitching. It's a little bit Western influenced because you know, I'm in the old West as it is. Um, and today I put makeup on. I didn't blow dry my bangs. They're just air dried this way. So we'll hope for the best there, but I put makeup on today and I already feel like, I don't know, 25% more myself. I feel like I just needed the comfort of it, which is unfortunate, but true. Maybe we'll talk about that more. Um, and then I have my little cicada earrings on. I did have a bangle on, but it's just too hot for jewelry, honestly. Um, I'm wearing my short ankle riding boots again that I wore to ride on the horse yesterday, but I need to go and get like proper big band-aids for back my heels and take an ibuprofen so I can ignore them properly. Um, but I'm just about to leave my hotel here in Moab. I'm driving to the Grand Canyon South Rim today hopefully through Monument Valley. I don't know if I'll do the loop around Monument Valley because my car and dirt roads, as I learned going out to um, Fisher Towers, is not the most, the best plan ever. Also, wow, did I get this mirror that dirty? I did a face mask last night, sorry. Um, but uh, my car and the dirt road situation, I don't know about that. But yeah, I'm gonna go try and find coffee because yesterday morning I didn't even have coffee, so. I'm noticing so far on this trip, my biggest issue is that I'm not planning enough time to get all the things seen that I want to see and feed myself on a proper schedule, which is, I don't know, adulting 101, don't die, I'll work on it. I stopped in a market for picnic supplies, got gas, and got on the road. Except right outside of town, this was on the side of Highway 191. Wilson Arch here is big, beautiful, and on BLM land, so free to access.
continuing on 191 to 163, I'll be spending most of the day driving through the Navajo Nation. The Navajo Nation is the largest reservation in the United States at about 25,000 square miles, the size of the state of West Virginia. With a goal to reach the Grand Canyon before dark and an already <clears throat> broken promise not to do any driving at night, I only plan for one quick stop on my 300 mile journey because sometimes you've got to stretch your legs after a few hours of driving. One of the most iconic western landscapes, Monument Valley, has been used in countless films and television programs. There are no self-guided tours of the features, but tours can be booked with guides via the Monument Valley Navajo Tribal Park. And even the views from the highway are stunning. And also very windy. Then there was another two and a half hour drive for me, but I'll jump ahead as we chase the sun. I've heard it said that many people treat the Grand Canyon like a stop on the way, taking a quick look before getting back on the road. But for whatever reason, coming to see this place had been on my 30 before 30 or whatever list for a long time, so the entire next day was spent here at the Grand Canyon South Rim. First pancakes in the hotel behind mine, though. Then we begin at the currently closed visitor center near Mather Point. I'll be walking 2.5 miles from Mather Point to the Grand Canyon Village along the Rim Trail along which I'll encounter butterflies, deer, ravens, lizards, tourists, and worst of all, very brave squirrels that will start licking your ice cream inches from you before you even notice, even though you stood in a very long line to overpay for dryers. <clears throat> Just be careful with the squirrels.
Reaching Grand Canyon Village, I stepped into the El Tovar Hotel, built in 1905 by the Fred Harvey Company and Santa Fe Railroad, before the Grand Canyon was even a formally protected park. The nearby Hopi House, credited to designer Mary Jane Coulter, was also opened just two weeks earlier in 1905 and was created as a market for Native American crafts, with the Hopi chosen as the featured artisans. After a small lunch and no ice cream, I took the park's free shuttle service back to the visitor center and drove further east to Grandview Point. yet further east again along the Desert View Drive to Moran Point, where having purchased a salad at the park's market, I had dinner, waiting to watch the sunset, hoping to stay here to see the stars. But the stars were mostly drowned out by the very bright full moon, and now alone at Moran Point in the very, very dark, I drove back to the visitor center and to Mather Point, where at least a few people were still wandering around. But I did have Mather Point all to myself in the dark, with the moon reflecting against the canyon walls to turn them a ghostly silver. On the morning of day six, I had a daunting drive ahead of me, from the Grand Canyon South Rim to Palm Springs, California, 423 miles and just under seven hours of driving away. Still, I decided to take historic Route 66 from Williams, Arizona to Kingman stopping in Seligman along the way for a soda. was a bit of a never-ending stretch from Kingman to Palm Springs through the desert.
so I was very glad I had booked the fancy pink splurge hotel for the trip with its checkered tile and 1950s meets Moroccan inspired design as a 30th birthday to me gift at the end of such a long drive. A good friend of mine was actually joining me for the California leg of my trip, if mostly in the evenings as she had to work during the daylight hours, so I went to fetch her from the airport before I could fall into the cloud-like hotel bed. in Palm Springs which I think this is hilarious but um, they don't allow you to take pictures with or like to do any photography or video with a DSLR but you can use a phone and I just want to note like I understand you have a photo policy it's fine but I just think it's hilarious because my DSLR is several years older than my phone so my phone camera is almost better if not actually better than my DSLR so I just think it's funny that you're totally allowed to use your phone but not a not a professional camera which but, you know, it's cool. I'll just vlog here in the room, which is fine. I'm in my little Palm Springs wide leg sateen trousers and matching crop top here because it is very, very hot here in Palm Springs. It's 108 or 109 and uh, definitely feeling very summer-tastic out here. But we do have a little balcony out here. Well, it's actually not that little. It's quite large, honestly. But it's hard to use a balcony when it's 110, literally. But uh, it's very nice here. I'm very much enjoying. This is the, probably the fanciest hotel I've ever stayed at. Treat yourself. <clears throat> uh, so that's been an experience, a little bit different for me. I'm not used to bougie things. Um, I, I dress like I am, but you know, dress for the life you want, not the one you have or whatever. Um, I, although I am not parking next to the Maserati over there because I'm not inviting that door ding, you know? I'm just not gonna do it. But it was just too hot for makeup again today. Just sunscreen in 100. And 10 degree heat. I don't know how I'm gonna do this whole Joshua tree thing because it is so very hot. So I'll have to wake up early tomorrow to do that because otherwise I think I will roast. But I was able to get a little bit of vintage shopping in today. So I'll insert a clip here of the few things I picked up. Um, so I can show you those, unless I end up getting more stuff on this trip, in which case maybe I'll just do a whole haul at the end. But yes, this is our little balcony here in the daylight. That's into the room and then there's like a a peninsula. You could fit a whole nother table and chairs out here, honestly. And then they have these trees and shrubberies blocking the little parking lot there. But uh, very, very, very cute and pink and Instagrammable. But it is very pink outside and inside here. And this bed is exceedingly comfortable, so that's always nice. And so on day eight, I got ready and set out for Joshua Tree, where my first stop was actually Pioneer Town, California. Actors Dick Curtis, Roy Rogers, Russell Hayden, and others developed the 1880s themed town in 1946 as a place to film Western films and television programs with easier access to both Palm Springs and Los Angeles. More than 50 films and serials were filmed in Pioneer Town during the 1940s and 50s, and even I purchased a filming permit at the Mercantile.
Next, I stopped into Joshua Tree National Park Visitor Center and the nearby Coyote Corner gift shop before finally heading into the park. I had escaped the heat as the rain had followed me again and it was down to about 76 degrees, but let's see what we can see as we dodge the weather. there. Really spiky cactus in the desert and such. And uh, up here, it's rain. So, you know, apparently I just bring rain to the desert wherever I go. tortoise crossing it and decide to stop the car and put your hazards on so no one else hits the tortoise. Just make sure it gets across the road. I mean, not normally either, but you know, it's a weird day.
On day nine, my last in Palm Springs, my friend and I headed to breakfast, but I dragged her into a vintage shop while we were waiting for our table. While the store was beautiful, they didn't have much from the 1940s or early 50s, except one magnificent brooch that was in this white box, which I purchased. Then I finally had the waffle I had been dreaming of, a churro waffle even, which was very good. I had hoped to do a little more vintage shopping, but the rain had returned and turned torrential too, so I fell for a couple of skull motif glasses and got back on the road to Los Angeles.